pretty sure you all know what this is, right? If you're watching this video, chances are in some point in your life you must have encountered one of these. This is a USB flash drive. It's a 128 gig SanDisk Extreme Go. A couple of years ago, I bought it because it was one of the few USB sticks to support the shiny new USB 3.1 standard, which offered speeds of 10 gigabits per second instead of 5 gigabits per second on USB 3.0. But little did I know at the time that USB 3.1 had actually split up into two different types. Gen 1, which was originally just called USB 3.0, and Gen 2, which used to be just USB 3.1. And after searching and searching for several minutes on end, I eventually discovered that there weren't any actual USB flash drives that used the Gen 2 standard. Even the fastest USB drive, the SanDisk Extreme Pro, couldn't even saturate the transfer speed of a USB 3.1 Gen 1 port. And with USB 3.1 Gen 2 now being pretty common in modern computers, are there any external storage devices that could break free of the shackles of 5 gigabits per second transfer speeds? Yes. Hello everyone and welcome to Driving Me Crazy Episode 2. Let's start today's episode by testing out this SanDisk USB, just so we have a reference on how your run-of-the-mill USB 3.1 Gen 1 flash drive performs. So let's plug this in the computer and today we will be using Crystal Disk Mark, a free disk benchmarking software. I'll have that linked in the video description below. And let's open up Crystal Disk Mark. And here's the user interface for Crystal Disk Mark. All we have to do is press all and it will just run the test. And since this will take a while to test, uh, I'll just fast forward the video until we actually see the results. So I will see you then. All right, after 10 minutes, the testing is finally finished. So for sequential read, we have 171.9 megabytes per second. And for sequential write, uh, we have around 60 megabytes per second. And that's fine, I guess, but we can do better. How? Well, to create the fastest USB flash drive ever, we have to move past traditional USB drives altogether and get with SSDs. And not just any SSD, but one that uses the NVMe or Non-Volatile Memory Express interface. Normal SSDs and hard drives use the SATA or Serial Advanced Technology Attachment Interface. The best SATA SSD, like this here Samsung 860 EVO, offers a sequential read speed of 550 megabytes per second and a sequential write speed of 520 megabytes per second. NVMe was developed specifically for SSDs and allows them to run at much higher speeds. And the best NVMe SSDs, like the Western Digital Black, well, this isn't really the Western Digital Black. This is a rebadge by SanDisk because Western Digital owns SanDisk, so this is basically the same drive. And uh, those two drives have a sequential read speed of 3400 megabytes per second and a sequential write speed of 2800 megabytes per second, a solid five to six times faster than the best SATA SSD. Now, NVMe SSDs are available in two form factors. M.2, which is the tiny card that attaches directly to your motherboard, and 2.5-inch U.2, which is basically like a 2.5-inch SATA SSD, except that it uses a U.2 interface. Today, we'll be using the M.2 form factor, simply because it's more compact, so it more closely resembles an actual USB flash drive, and that I had one lying around. So here is that drive. You may remember this from the last episode of Driving Me Crazy, the one where I replaced this NVMe SSD, which originally served as the boot drive in this laptop with a SanDisk Extreme Pro 1TB NVMe SSD, which is what this is. That is, by the way, not to be confused with the SanDisk Extreme Pro USB drive. I don't know what's going on with SanDisk's naming scheme, but just to clear up any confusion. If you want to watch the uh, drive replacement video, you can click up here or you can check out the link in the video description below. So we have our SSD, but we'll be needing an adapter to connect it to the USB Type-C port on the side of the laptop right here. You can't see it, but it's on this side. 
uh, which is where the USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C to NVMe adapter comes in, which is what this is. Now you don't need to get this specific adapter. You can get a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-A to NVMe adapter if it suits your needs more. But my computer's Gen 2 port is Type-C, so here we go, I got this. Now with that out of the way, we can now install this. And I'm going to fast forward to when the drive is actually put into the uh, enclosure, uh, just to save some time. If you want to see how to install this, you can check out the drive installation and replacement video linked in the video description below. All right, now I'm recording from the computer screen and you'll see that the original drive has now been installed because these two are basically the same. Um, so before we do anything, we have to format the drive because as I said in the last Driving Me Crazy episode, this drive has slowed down immensely. Uh, so we need to remove the data by reformatting it. So all we have to do is go into Windows Explorer and right click Format. And just go through all the defaults. Don't change anything because everything is already set up for you. And now we can start. We have two partitions, so I'll be doing this for each of them. And we can press start. Yes, it'll erase all data. That's fine. That's what formatting is. So just click OK. And this might take a while. So I'll fast forward again to save time once both partitions have been formatted. All right, so now the drive is empty and we are sure that it performs at its maximum speed. So now we can open Crystal Disk Mark again and make sure to test the proper drive. Here it is, 0% because it's basically all erased. And again, this will take some time, so I will come back to you after the tests are done. And would you look at that? It's got almost 900 megabytes per second on sequential read and almost 700 megabytes per second on the sequential write. In every single freaking category, it is better than the USB flash drive that I just tested. Holy crap, that's amazing! You may notice though, that's not actually the full speed of a normal NVMe drive. This drive supposedly achieves 3000 megabytes per second read. So, what gives? Why aren't we getting the full speed? Well, my friends, this is what's called a bottleneck. This NVMe drive is connected via USB 3.1 Gen 2, which is limited to 10 gigabits per second, or 1250 megabytes per second. Meaning, this drive isn't actually performing at its peak. To be fair, almost 1 gigabyte per second is pretty fast. That's competitive with a mid to entry level NVMe drive. But that's not good enough, you say. You want the full speed of an NVMe SSD. You want no bottlenecks. You want the best that an external storage device can provide. And you're willing to pay for it. Fair enough. Let's turn this up to 11. The solution you seek is called Thunderbolt 3. It's basically a standard that allows you to run PCI Express devices like graphics cards and NVMe SSDs externally over a USB-C port. You can tell it's a Thunderbolt port if it has a little lightning bolt next to it. If you're still unsure though, you can always check your computer specs online. One Thunderbolt 3 port can support PCI Express Gen 3 X4, meaning four PCI Express lanes. Perfect for NVMe SSDs, as they normally use four PCI Express lanes, which is what makes them much faster than any SATA-based SSD. There are some Thunderbolt 3 ports that only use two PCI Express lanes, and while those would still work, your data transfer rate would be severely reduced, so do check what kind of Thunderbolt 3 ports your computer has before buying one of these. Anyway, as Thunderbolt 3 is basically PCI Express for external devices, an NVMe SSD should be able to run at or close to its maximum speed. This, without a doubt, makes a high-end NVMe SSD that is connected via Thunderbolt 3 the fastest flash drive bar none. But that speed comes at a hefty price. A USB 3.1 Gen 2 to NVMe enclosure like this one is around 
but one with Thunderbolt 3 capabilities is around 180 bucks, which is a lot more. For perspective, 180 bucks can get you a Samsung 970 Evo 500 gig and a USB 3.1 Gen 2 to NVMe enclosure. But the problems don't stop there. While Thunderbolt 3 ports are compatible with USB 3.1 Gen 2 devices and cables, standard USB-C ports do not accept Thunderbolt 3 devices, which means you can only use your expensive Thunderbolt 3 NVMe enclosure with Thunderbolt 3 enabled USB-C ports. And therein lies the problem. Thunderbolt 3 is not nearly as common as USB is. Say you want to transfer files from your desktop to your laptop. And although many of the latest laptops now, such as this Lenovo Y720, have Thunderbolt 3 ports, very few desktop motherboards, if any at all, actually have them. Which means, in order to transfer files at full speed, short of plugging in the SSD directly in the M.2 slot on the motherboard, you'd need to install a Thunderbolt 3 add-in card to your motherboard to get that functionality which could add another hundred dollars to the bill. Then you have the issue of it not working with other devices at all, such as TVs, none of which at least that I know of have a Thunderbolt 3 port, let alone a USB Type-C port. To overcome this, you would have to get a USB 3.1 Gen 2 NVMe enclosure on top of your Thunderbolt 3 NVMe enclosure and your Thunderbolt 3 PCI Express add-in card. Putting the total cost at 460 bucks compared to just 180 for the SSD and the USB adapter. What I'm trying to say here is that you go through a lot of trouble to get maximum performance out of these drives. But it is worth it for some people. Who you ask? Content creators, 3D designers, and other professionals who constantly deal with large files. People in those fields could really use something like this even with the initial financial cost and hassle to get everything running properly because it will pay itself back eventually. It's the same reason these professionals spend thousands of dollars on Quadro GPUs and Threadripper CPUs. It's an investment. They spend more on professional grade workstation equipment so they can complete their work faster. Time is money. And the less time spent waiting for file transfers or renders means more work can be done for time and they can get paid faster. On the other hand, what if you are anyone but a professional user? Should you consider one of these? If I'm being honest, most people shouldn't. To really enjoy this drive speed, your computer must have a drive that performs just as well as or better than this drive, which in this case would be an NVMe SSD. At this point in time, I don't think most people have a computer with an NVMe drive, let alone one that's large enough to store a lot of programs and files. Your average computer would typically have a small SSD, maybe a few hundred gigs as a boot drive, and several terabytes of hard drive space for mass storage. If your computer is like the one I just described, don't waste your money with one of these, because most of the time you won't ever notice the difference. But. If you are one of the few that own a computer that does have a large enough NVMe drive for mass storage, then 100%, I can definitely recommend this. It doesn't break the bank, and it's faster than any USB stick or SATA solid state drive. All in all, pretty solid performance. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Please also remember to hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Post your questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, or suggestions down in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video.